Today I'd like to uh, work with the uh, zone trigger in the MSO 5000. Now this is a new feature that was actually, I think, invented by Keysight or it may, it may have been one of the other uh, scope manufacturers, but it's been around for a little while. And we'll look at a little bit later at a Keysight application note on zone triggering. But uh, the thing about zone triggering is it allows you to basically draw a box on the screen that will uh, that that you can then use to qualify a trigger. So what do we mean by qualify? Well, on the screen, what you see is an edge trigger of what is called the frequent anomaly on the uh, DS6000 demo board. By frequent anomaly, what we mean is that most of the time the signal rises. Let me change the uh, time base. The, the signal looks like an ordinary square wave, like a clock. But occasionally, what happens is the clock rises, but then fails to latch and falls back to a zero. <clears throat> it's called frequent because it happens about once every millisecond. So, what can you uh, what can you use zone trigger for here? Well, zone trigger to to enable a zone trigger. What you do is you draw a rectangle, uh, just call it a box on the screen. Now, there's a number of ways to do that. One is you can use the touch screen and your finger to do that, or you can click on draw a rectangle here in the menu. And notice it says touch for zone. So now what we are going to do is we're going to draw a box right there over and I hope you can see that the uh, what we have done is we have drawn the box so that the anomalous signal goes through that box and we turn it loose and it says, do you want to set up trigger zone A, B, do you want to create a histogram, do you want to zoom in horizontally, do you want to zoom in vertically, or do you want to zoom in on a, a waveform? The, I, I'm not going to talk about these last, uh, this last group of things. I'm only going to talk about the trigger zones, but uh, these are pretty well explained in the manual, and I think you kind of get the idea. This is no different than on your on your smartphone. When you want to look at an area more more carefully, you can draw a uh, a box around it, and then uh, and then just say zoom in, and it will zoom into that area. So uh, that's not what we're going to do now. What we're going to do now is click on Trigger Zone A, and you notice that a menu comes up and says Trigger Zone A Enable. It, it automatically turns on the Enable, by the way, when you do it the way I just did it. It gives you a place for the source of that zone. It says Zone A is either an intersect or a not intersect, and we have selected intersect. In a minute we'll do the not intersect. Uh, then there is a Zone B enable, a source for Zone B, and uh, the uh, type of uh, what the zone does there, once again, enabled or not enabled. So let's turn on a Zone B. We're just going to draw up here another box, and we're going to say that is going to be Trigger Zone B. And notice that it turns the Enable on. And now we're going to say, it, it says not intersect. If we say intersect, you may notice the scope freezes because it cannot find a signal 
that intersects this and this. So we're going to change that back to not intersect. And now you may notice that the scope is triggering again. So this is how a zone trigger works on the MSO 5000. So now let's take a look at a place where it might not work uh, so well, or, or maybe I should preface the next uh, segment by saying zone trigger works really well where you can either see the signal you want to draw the box around or you can guess where it is. Let me show you what I mean by guess. Before we look at the next example, I did want to show you this application note that I found on the Keysight web page entitled Triggering on Infrequent Anomalies and Complex Signals Using Zone Trigger. I found it very useful and while the specifics that are described in here apply to Keysight oscilloscopes, the general ideas apply to any oscilloscope that has a similar type of zone trigger. The, uh, they talk about four uh, areas where zone trigger is useful. This morning we're only talking about non-monotonic edges, that very first uh, thing. But as you notice it also shows how to use a zone trigger on setup and hold violations and isolated ones and zeros as well as serial bus. Uh, and as I pointed out, the, uh, this is uh, zone trigger qualifies an existing trigger. So if you're triggering using a serial bus uh, trigger, sometimes called a protocol trigger, you can qualify it with a zone trigger. In other words, modify it, add some additional uh, functionality. Now what I've done is changed the signal from the frequent anomaly to the rare anomaly, which uh, if you watched the previous video on recording and playback, you know this anomaly only occurs when the uh, about every 80 or so milliseconds. So uh, about 10 or 12 times per second. That's pretty infrequent. And it's hard on a scope to see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on draw a rectangle. And now we're going to have to guess because we can't see that uh, anomaly. It happens so rarely that, uh, I don't know, maybe you can see it, but I can't. We know that it's right about here. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box right in this area and going to turn on trigger zone A, but notice we're just guessing. We turn that on and sure enough we guessed right. But suppose that we had thought, oh, we think it might be out here. Well, it's not out there, and we are looking for something that intersects that area, but nothing ever does. So, the scope has actually stopped triggering now because, uh, remember at the beginning of the video I said the zone trigger qualifies the trigger? What I mean by that is it modifies it. So there's an edge and a zone. These two get uh, looked at together. And for the signal to be triggered with a zone trigger, the, the basic trigger, in this case the edge, has to occur. And then the waveform has to pass through the zone. We're going to turn this off. And we're going to draw one down here now. And turn it on. And this time we guessed right. So, this gives you an idea of how the zone trigger can be used on the MSO 5000 as well as where it's useful and where it's not. 
if you have no idea where to draw the zone, because it's not visible on the screen, then you're, you're basically just guessing. And you may guess right or you may guess wrong. Nonetheless, the zone trigger can be very useful in testing embedded systems. Now, I will point out that zone trigger qualifies a trigger, and it doesn't have to be an edge. It can be a pulse trigger. It can be a timeout trigger. It can even be a protocol trigger. So, perhaps in some future video, we'll have an opportunity to combine zone triggering with some much more advanced trigger system, like perhaps a protocol trigger. But for now, I hope this gives you an idea of what the zone trigger uh, is useful for, as well as how to make it work on the MSO 5000. As always, I encourage you to stay tuned. We're going to now move into the area of using an oscilloscope in embedded systems. And while I'm going to continue using the MSO 5000, there may be times when I will switch to another instrument because what we're looking for is what's the best tool to use when we're trying to qualify or, or examine, debug, whatever word you want to use, an embedded system that may or may not have a problem. So I hope you'll stay tuned for those videos. Uh, this is going to finish the series on the, the basic MSO 5000, and we're going to now move on to embedded systems. Please stay safe and have a nice day.